Good evening. This is Sergeant X. They say that ghosts and the like just don't exist. That when a person passes on, he just lies quietly, not bothering another soul, so to speak. You believe that, don't you? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, did you ever hear about the skull that walked? No? Then listen, my friends, to the Mystery Playhouse. I guess uh, superstition is a pretty hard thing to down completely, isn't it? I mean, uh, under certain circumstances, almost anybody can get the creeps and get them good. (laughs) I guess most of us are a little bit afraid of the unknown. For instance, uh, taking a midnight stroll through a graveyard isn't exactly your idea of fun, is it? And I don't suppose you'd particularly go into ecstasies if you happen to witness a good gory murder, either. Well, there's a fellow I know who thinks this all comes under the heading of good, clean fun. His hobby is horror, and he likes to tell stories along those lines. I think he has one for you right now. Wait till I try this door here. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. This is... Raymond, your host. Well, come in, won't you? Yes, how are your spirits this evening? Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Our spirits are fine, too. Would you like to see them? Oh, it's no trouble at all. Now, um, which would you care to see first? The spirit or the body? Ah, well, the body is right over there on the floor. And the spirit is right next to it. Oh, oh, you can't see it. I forgot to tell you, you have to be one in order to see one. (laughs) Shall we get started? Well, naturally. Now, uh, turn out the lights. No, no, you won't see any ghosts in the dark, but... (laughs) They'll be able to see you. (laughs) Far from town, there are a group of three hills. On the summit of the highest of them is the Cruz estate, owned by two brothers, Arthur and Carl. At this moment, Carl and his wife, Lucille, are digging a hole at the entrance of the estate, planting young poplar trees. Carl, I think it's deep enough. Oh, I think we ought to go a little deeper down. Uh, oh, here comes Spears. Spears, you, uh, you're digging? Yes, we're going to plant a whole row of Lombardy poplars. Mm-hmm. You you mean right here? Yep. We're going to line both sides of the road. Well, well perhaps you'd better let me do it. I, I'm your caretaker. I should do the gardening. Oh. Spears, you look upset. What's the matter? Well, where you're digging is an old Indian burial spot. There's a curse on it. Oh, don't worry about it, Spears. You don't believe it? Of course not. Lucille and I don't go in for superstition. Yes, but it's no superstition, sir. It's a... You hit a rock. Uh-huh. Oh, I... That sounds like a rock. It's a little hollow. Dig it up, whatever it is. Yeah. What? Oh, it's a skull. Yes. A skull. Spears is right. This place must have been an old Indian burial oh, ground. Please put it back. No, I'll keep it. Carl. Perhaps you'd better put it back. Oh, please, please bury it again, Mr. Cruz. It will bring bad luck to all of us. No, Spears, that's just a silly silly superstition. Well, uh, what about the rest of the skeleton? Well, well, there doesn't doesn't seem to be one. No, just a skull. Uh, uh, You bring it into the house, will you, Spears? uh, I'd rather not. All right, I'll take it in myself. Don't either of you mention this to my brother, Arthur. He's terribly scared of things like this, and he's just gotten over his nervous breakdown. Carl, perhaps you should put the skull back. Well, Lucille, you're not being taken in by this hokum about curses, are you? Oh, that, that sounded like my wife, Mary. She was cleaning the windows. Good heavens. She 
fell out of the window. Mary. 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 But she's unconscious. Please do something. You must do something. I'm afraid there's nothing we can do, Spears. She hit her head against a rock. She's dead. How, Spears? He's quieted down. I can't understand it. There's only one rock underneath the window, and Mary hit that. That one rock. There isn't even a pebble around for yards. Well, don't go imagining things again, Arthur. Spears kept talking about a curse. Spears believes in pixies and gremlins, too, don't forget. Well, I feel rather funny about it all. Oh, Carl, maybe you'd better switch some more lamps on. This living room feels gloomy. Oh, let's cut this nonsense out. Wait. You hear anything? Oh? No, I don't. Yes. Something is coming from the ceiling. What's coming from the ceiling? I don't hear... What is it? It must be the beams. I sometimes do that from the heat. It's not the beams. It's too regular a sound. What room is directly above us? It's, it's an old bedroom. We use it as a storeroom now. It hasn't been open in years. There's something up there. Of course there is. A lot of old things from years back, Lucille. Did you put the skull in the score of Dorum? Yes. Yes, I did. What are you two whispering of... Coming down the stairs. We'll take a look and settle this. So far. Dad! Look at your feet, Carl. The skull. How, how, how did it get down here? It came down the steps. Seems to be looking up at us. A skull. How, how did it get into the house? Carl found it while digging. Spears said it belonged to some Indian. Spears was right. There is a curse on the house. We'll all be killed. I'm leaving. I can't stand it. Well, Carl, what are you going to do with the skull? Well, lock it up in the closet. Lock it. Carl, you'd better bury it again. No, I... I can't do that, Lucille. If I do, it means I believe in all this tummy rot about ghosts. Well, then suppose you tell me how a skull could open a door and then come bouncing down the steps. I don't know. Maybe someone's playing a trick on us, dear. What happened to Mary was no trick, Carl. Nor is this, and you know it. Well, whatever it is, I I'm not going to bury it. We'll keep it locked up in the closet. Oh, Mr. Cruz. Uh, yes. What is it, Spears? Well, it it isn't my place to tell you, sir, but I... You're referring to the skull, aren't you? Yes, sir. Well, it won't bother us anymore. The whole thing's some queer trick. I've got it safely hidden in this closet. I'm putting a lock on the outside. But the lock isn't going to do any good, sir. It will break through the door, just like the last time. I don't think anything like that can happen again. I'm the only one that has a key to this lock. If the skull wants to break out, you will have to come to me for the key. <laughs> How are you feeling, Arthur? I'll never feel right in this house again. Oh, nonsense. Why don't you put a light on? Arthur, it's, it's morbid sitting here in the dark by yourself. We're all going to die. Don't be ridiculous, Arthur. Where is the skull? Where it can't get out. Tomorrow I'll take it into town and let the police look at it. Tomorrow will be too late. Look, I, I'm getting tired of this. You've got to get hold of yourself, Arthur. You, you'll go completely to pieces. You think I'm a coward, don't you? Oh, Arthur, no. Well, you're not a coward. You're just a victim of your own exaggerated imagination. Wait. There's someone at the door. Oh. I'll open it. Who is it? I... I don't know. No one came in. Something came in. For heaven's sake, put the light on. The skull. I, I, I can't believe it. You can't believe it. <laughs> there it is, grinning at you from the floor, but you can't believe it. You don't believe in these things. I, I, I put a lock on the door. Locks aren't going to help. 
Nothing is going to help. We're all going to die. It's, uh, it's an hour later now. Arthur has gotten over his hysteria, but he is still terrified. I'm not going to spend another night in this house, Carl. But, Arthur, there's got to be some logical explanation. I'm not in the least bit curious. I just want to get out of here tonight. I'm going to go with him, Carl. Lucille. Well? Perhaps we'll bury it again. We'll put it back in the same place we found it. That won't do any good. It's too late now. Don't be ridiculous. If it wants anything at all, it wants to get buried again. I'm sure all this mysterious business will come to an end as soon as we bury it. The house won't ever be the same. Oh, stop it. Both of you. You're acting like a couple of scared children. We'll put the skull back where we found it and and we won't be bothered by it anymore. Spears! Spears! Uh, Yes, Mr. Cruz? This... this skull. Let's take it out and bury it in the same place where we found it. I'm glad you reconsidered, sir. It's the only way. I don't seem to remember the spot. Well, it's on the other side, sir, right near the entrance road. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Here it is. But the hole we dug, it's not here. I I filled it in, sir. Oh, well, we'd better dig it up. Yes, sir. If you'll hold the skull, I'll dig it open. We might as well do it right. I know exactly how deep it was. If you don't mind, Miss Cruz, I'd rather not touch the skull. All right. Yeah. Yeah, that's about right. There. Now we'll put the thing back. Well, it it doesn't seem to want to go back. Oh, I just missed dropping it into the hole. Uh, hold the fire side down here. Yes, sir. Well, that does it. Oh, I hope we'll have no more trouble. Well, Carl, did you bury it? Yes, same place. Let's all forget about it, shall we? Maybe it's easy for you, Carl. But I won't forget about it for a long time. Neither will I. I'll be having nightmares about it for months. I don't know what's gotten into you, Lucille. You were never easily frightened. I'm not. But skulls that roll by themselves give me a funny feeling. Mm. Well, uh, look, come on, let's play cards, huh? Hearts? We don't need more than three hands to play. We'll forget the whole crazy business, huh? Okay? Well, I might as well. All right. Deal the cards. Okay. You. Yeah. Oh, well, we're getting back to normalcy, huh? Arthur, pass your cards. That wind came up suddenly. Who's first? You are, I see. Oh. All right. Uh, nine of diamonds. You're gone, Arthur. Come on, Arthur, throw a card. I think I hear something. Of course you do. The wind. No, I... I thought I heard a rapping sound. Look, just pay attention to the game and stop listening for sounds. Here's my card. You threw a club, diamonds, the suit. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Arthur. Did you hear that? What was that? It's only the wind blowing the shutter. Oh, come on, let's play. Throw a card, Arthur. There's someone at the door. It isn't the wind. Someone's outside. All right, I'll open the door. No, no, don't open it. Please, Lucille. Sitting here frightened isn't going to do us any good. We've got to open the door. Don't open it, Carl. Who is it, Carl? What? It, it was it, nothing. It's just the wind. You're lying. Your face is white as a sheet. I know. It's the skull. It's come back. I, I tell you, it's nothing. It, it, just the wind. Nobody was there. I'll see for myself. The skull. Oh, Mrs. Cruz, I, I didn't hear you knock. I didn't. I want to talk to you, Spears. Uh, yes, Mrs. Cruz, but it, it's rather late. You've been up late before. Oh, yes, but it's just that I'm tired tonight. I I don't mean to be rude. You've been doing a lot of night work? What are you referring to, Mrs. Cruz? 
Spears, you don't really believe in skulls that move around by themselves, do you? Well, I... I warned your husband about it. It's a curse. Is it part of a curse for a skull to use a trowel to unbury itself? Your trowel? My trowel? Oh, you're mistaken. <laughs> no, I'm not. I just came from there. Why would I want to do anything like that? Mm -hmm. Why? That's why I'm here. I'd like to know why. Please, Mrs. Cruz, I I'm tired. We'll talk about it in the morning. We'll talk about it now, Spears, right now. Get out of my room. All right. I'm going straight to the police. I've got the trowel. We'll see if the skull left any fingerprints. You won't do that, Mrs. Cruz. Oh, yes, I will. All right, Spears, just sit right where you are or I'll shoot. Oh, please. Put the gun down. Start talking. Well, it, it, it's all a mistake. If you don't start talking, I'll shoot. In self-defense. Did you dig up that skull? Why, I... I did you... Yes. Yes, I did. And you rolled the skull down the steps. The first night it was in this house, didn't you? Well, it was only a joke. I... And you also managed to open the closet. Yes, but I... Whose skull is it? I don't know. You're lying. That skull has something to do with you. I checked up on it. Your first wife disappeared. Perhaps the police can identify the skull. Oh, please, don't go to the police. I... Well, it was my first wife, Jane. I, I killed her. I didn't want your husband to bring the skull to the police, so I tried to scare all of you away from here as the safest measure. Go on. Yes. Wait a minute. Who rolled the skull into Arthur's room? It wasn't me. It must That's have been... That's right. It was me. Perhaps you and I can work things out. I tried to frighten my dear brother-in-law, Arthur, away so that I can have complete ownership of the entire estate. You see, Arthur is leaving tonight. Yeah. Perhaps we can help each other. No one has to know of our little conversation. No one is going to know. Well, now that we've both accomplished our purpose, maybe it would be the best thing to bury the skull again. Yes. We'll do it now. Well, here we are. Let's hurry. They'll miss me if I'm out here too long. Perhaps we'd better dig another hole. Oh, it doesn't matter. Will you hold the skull? No. I... I'd rather not. <laughs> You haven't suddenly gotten squeamish, have you, Mrs. Cruz? Put the skull in the ground and dig that hole. Oh, all right. <laughs> What's the matter? The skull. Look at it. What about it? It's moving. Can't you see? Well, it, it, it is just the wind pushing Hurry it. Hurry up. There. Yes, there. It's deep enough now. Hand me the skull. Oh, I no. forgot you. You won't touch it. All right, I'll get it myself. What's the matter? My hand. I can't get my hand out. The jaws clamped your, down. Your hand. Please, help me. You've got to help me. Do something. You've got to do something. It, it won't let go. I can't. Oh, please, Jane. Jane, darling. I didn't mean to kill you. You're my wife. I, I didn't mean it. It was an accident. Please believe me. I, I'll do anything. Anything. Oh, no. No, Jane. No. Oh. How is she, Carl? Oh, it's, a, it's pretty bad. The doctor says it's hopeless. There's nothing more I can do. Her hair, Arthur. It's turned completely white. She's just out of her mind. Horrible. Spears died this morning. He never recovered consciousness. Died of fright. Everything else seems to make sense, but I... I don't understand how the skull could have clamped its jaws on his hand. When he picked it up, he must have picked it up upside down. The lower jaw, which swings on a hinge, came down. He was so frightened that his hand froze to the skull. Spears was just frightened to death. Ah. 
I want that skull. Yes, sir, I want it as a knocker for the inner sanctum door. Good night. Pleasant (laughs) dreams. (laughs) Well, uh, thank you very much, friend Raymond. Your sense of humor is really quite refreshing. That is in a ghoulish sort of way. We'll we'll be trying your creaking door again soon for some more laughs. Well, right now, let's look in on the green room where the players are rehearsing the next performance in the Mystery Playhouse. Follow me, please. Come. What a crowd. Say, Dexter, how's it feel to be both a spy-catching hero and a prospective bridegroom at the same time? At the moment, it feels like being the 13th sardine in a tin built for 12. Well, the doghouse is always like this. Hey, finish your story, Stanley, about Dexter reporting the German agent that, uh, what's his name? Quartz. Quartz, yeah. Well, Dexter here figures that Quartz is up to something, so he tips off the FBI. Yeah. Hey, hey, you guys, take a look at that gal in the black dress. <laughs> That's fine talk for a guy who's about to get married. Well, go on, Stanley. <laughs> Dexter's only trying to change the subject. Well... Following up Dexter's tip, the federal men trapped Quartz. Uh-huh. That was six weeks ago. <laughs> so today, in three minutes, in fact, Quartz is going to get quite a shock. Quite a shock. You mean they're going to... That's right. At six o'clock, that'll be less than three minutes now, Quartz is being electrocuted. You ought to read the newspapers, Lieutenant, and find out about things. Well, when you've just got back from the canal zone, you're likely to neglect the newspapers for the first few days. Hey, the gal behind us. <laughs> What'd you say, Dexter? The gal behind us. Won the black dress. Oh. Mob's too thick. I can't even turn around to get a look at her. Hey, go on, Stanley. What was this quartz after? Plans of a new type mortar, wasn't it, Dexter? Mortar? Oh, I, I can't say. Oh, don't be such a clam. But it's taboo, I tell you. Well, don't get sore about it. Oh, who's sore? Come on, come on. Let's get out of this mob and find some less crowded joint, huh? Oh, take it easy. Let's have at least one drink here, and now we finally got to the bar. <laughs> Ouch! Oh, what the heck? What's the matter, Dexter? Somebody step on your corns? Oh, oh, no. It felt like someone stuck a needle in my hand, but the way I'm wedged in here, I can't even lift my hand to see. <laughs> Probably a pen scratched you. With all these women about. Hey, Dexter. According to the clock on the wall there, Quartz is being executed right this second. I'll say, it's kind of close in here. Let's get out and get some fresh air. Take a look in the mirror over the bar, Stanley. That woman behind me. Oh, oh. That's what Dexter's been muttering about. The brunette in black. Smooth. Hey, do you know her? What makes you think I know her? Well, I thought she nodded at you. Just my natural good looks. <laughs> I never saw her before in my life. It's uh, kind of close in here. Let's get out. I can hardly breathe. Oh, stop clowning, Dexter. Quit leaning on me. What's eating, Dexter? Just because he's going to be married in three days. <laughs> You shouldn't have mentioned marriage, Stanley. From the way he's leaning on me, he must have fainted. <laughs> That's altar fright. <laughs> Come on, Dexter, take your weight off him. Of all I can do to take care of myself and... This... Say, Stanley, he has fainted or something. No kidding. Oh, Dexter's a practical joke. No, this isn't a joke. He's all gray about the lips. Huh? Look at him. I mean, hold him, he's falling. Oh, Dexter! <laughs> Dexter! Dexter, what's the matter? Dexter! Lieutenant, is he all right? What's the matter with him? Is he all right? No. He isn't. I, I, I think he's dead. Well, it's impossible. Uh, is, is there a doctor here? Uh, open his collar or something. Just don't let him lay there. Come on. Oh, over here, doctor. Back up, please. Let the doctor through. Lieutenant, what on earth's happened? Who's the doctor? Maybe he can tell us. Hey, doctor, right over here. Ralph, here, let's have a look. Oh. Help me turn this man over. Sure. There. Looks like he's been suffocated. Doctor, is he dead? Oh, yes, he's dead all right. Oh, he can't be. Only a minute ago, he, he was standing here talking with us. He said something about somebody sticking a needle in his hand. What's that piece of black paper on the back of his right hand? Yeah, what? Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Hmm. It's thin black cardboard. Perfect circle, about a quarter of an inch in diameter. With a tiny hole in the exact center. Hmm. There's a small puncture in the skin on the back of the right hand, right over the place where the circular piece of cardboard was. A drop of blood caused the cardboard to adhere to his hand. Somebody better call the police. The police? Why? Because it looks as if your friend here has been murdered. But that couldn't have been murdered. I was standing right beside him all the time. No one's to leave. Everybody stay right where you are. And you over there, call the police department and ask for homicide. Come on, get out of the way. 
Uh, I'm Detective Sergeant Locke. Are you the doctor who called headquarters? Yes, that's right. Who's the guy on the floor? What happened to him? Willard Dexter. As to what happened to him, we don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Who was nearest Dexter at the time? Well, the lieutenant and I were with him. That's and right. I was behind him, and so was this lady. Oh, you were, huh? How about that lady? Yes, I guess that's right. Okay, then I want to take you two ladies, and you, lieutenant, and you, mister, aside for questioning. We'll go in this office here. Oh, and Doc, uh, would you come along too, please? Well, of course, Sergeant. All right, just step in. Every... All right, Blondie, you two. Oh, I can't. I got a date in ten minutes. Go on, can't... get in there. Am I arrested? Are you up? Look, Blondie, you will be in just about one second if you don't get in there. Oh, all right, but don't call me Blondie. Hey, Duggan, don't let anyone in here. Right. Now, we'll get a little privacy. Uh, Lieutenant, let's have your story first. Well, we were standing in the crowd. Your name? Lieutenant Max Lurbach. Okay, go ahead. Well, Stanley and Dexter and I were at the bar. In what order? Order? Oh, uh, well, Dexter was on the right. I was in the middle and Stanley was on the left. All right, go on. Dexter said that someone stuck a needle in his hand. And suddenly he went limp and fell to the floor. Sergeant, on the back of his right hand, I found this little black cardboard disc. Yeah. Under the disc is a small wound, and I've made a study of poisons. I believe that this man, Dexter, was poisoned. Poisoned? Yes. There's a poison which, taken internally, may do no harm at all. But the smallest bit introduced directly into the bloodstream causes almost immediate paralysis of the nerves which control the breathing. What poison? Curare. Huh? There's a trace of what seems to be Curare on the underside of that black cardboard disc. And you'll think he was murdered? It appears probable. Your idea, Doctor, is that someone jabbed a poison-coated needle into Dexter's hand? A minute or so before he collapsed. Now, where would a guy get this stuff? Well, certainly not from the average drugstore. Curare is made by the South American Indians. It's a very rare in this country. Say, Stanley, did you notice... Dexter died at the same time Quartz was executed. Say, I hadn't thought What's of that? that? The spy who was electrocuted? Yes, Sergeant. Dexter was the clerk in the Army Ordnance Department who suspected Quartz and tipped off the FBI. Yeah? It couldn't have been a coincidence that they both died at practically the same minute. You don't suppose... The I don't agent... suppose anything yet. Hey, Sarge. Photo and fingerprint boys are here. Right with you, Duggan. Now, everyone, just sit tight a minute. Say, that's a rather unusual way to kill somebody, don't you think? I wonder if that police sergeant is right and the killer really is one of those four people. Well, it's too bad our time is all up or we could stay around and find out. I'm afraid you'll have to wait until next time when we present the entire story of Death in the Doghouse. This is Sergeant X closing the doors of the Mystery Playhouse. Good night. Sleep tight. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.